So over here, I'm going to create a while loop. And I'm going to say while what's in the charge account number is not equal to, exclamation sign means not equal to, is not equal to an empty string. Now, this is a space. This is an empty string. Okay, it's a, it's a string with nothing in it, not a space, nothing in it. So while what's in the charge account number is not equal to an empty string, meaning while we haven't reached the end of the file, then let's go ahead and use this number. Okay, um, so the question said we should write a program that reads the content of the, of the file into a list. So if we're reading the content of the, of the file, we need a place to um, store it, which, which happens to be a list. If you're going to store it in a list, we need to we have a list here. And so right above this, I'm going to create a list. I'm going to call it charge account list, just so we know when, what it is. I'm <coughs> sorry. Initially, it's going to be an empty string. Sorry, an empty list. Sorry, empty list. So it's like this, empty list. So over here, while the charge account number, while the contents of the charge account number is not an equal to an empty string, meaning what with the file is, if we haven't reached the end of the file, then let's append this number to the ch our charge account list because that's what we're supposed to do. We're reading the contents into the list. And so charge account list dot append. And what are we appending to this uh, list? We are appending the charge account number because we determined over here that it's not equal to uh, an empty string. So when we append this number here uh, to, to this list, we want to go ahead and read the next line. Remember, we, we um, the read position, after reading the first line, the read position will be at the beginning of the next line. So we have to call read, uh, read line again to read the next line. And then it's going to move the read position from the end of this line to the next line. And so after appending that first number, we want to call charge account number, Hold on. We want to call charge account um, charge account file dot read line again. We want to read the next line. So it reads the line, and it's going to return it. So if it's, if it's returning it, we need a place to store it again. I'm going to store it again back in charge account number. And then the loop continues. It checks again. While the charge account number is not equal to an empty string. All right. So the very first time this loop 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 this loop iterates, it reads the very first number here. It reads this, moves the read position from the end of this line to the, to the next line. Stores the, that first number to charge account number. We append it to the list. And then we call charge accounts file at read line again. We read the next line. And it's going to take that number and store it in charge account number. And then we move the uh, read position. Uh, we don't move it, but it does, that, it does that automatically. It moves the read position from the end of this line to the beginning of the next line, right? And so we'll have that content. We'll check to see if it's not it's not equal to an empty string. If it's not equal to an empty string and it's equal to something we appended to the list, we read the next line again. At some point, what we read will be an empty string. And so this while loop will stop. Because this while loop will only, only execute if what's in the charge account number is not equal to an empty string. If it's equal to an, if it's equal to an empty string, the loop will stop. Uh, by that time, we will have all numbers appended to our list. So outside this while loop, when this while loop is done iterating, we will have all our numbers appended to our list. So when we are done, let's go ahead and return our list. And we are done. That's the function of, of this function here. <laughs> so it does this thing. It, uh, it, it appends all the numbers to the list and returns it. All right. The next thing I want to do, let's see. The program said we should determine whether the number, um, so after asking the user over here, the program should ask the user to enter a charge account number. And the program should determine whether the number is valid by searching for it in the list. If the number is in the list, the program should display a message indicating the number is valid. If not, then we should say it's in, uh, the number is not, is not valid. So let's define a function for that too. Let's define a function that is going to check to see if that number, the, the user number, exists. So I'm going to call this function user number, let's say user charge account number exists. I'm going to call it user charge account number exists. Okay, that's so what, I'm, um, what I'm going to call this function. All right, so this function, again, we need to determine if this function is going to um, accept any argument. So we determine, so we define uh, any parameters, <coughs> sorry. 
Okay, so first of all, it's going to need what we are searching for. So it's going to need the user's uh, the user's search the, uh, uh, search value, the child account number that the, the user is searching for. So I'm going to uh, define a parameter uh, for that value. So this is going to be the user charge account number. Now it's it doesn't matter that it doesn't matter this variable name is equal to or is the same as this. It doesn't matter. The scope of this variable is within the user charge account number exists function, and the scope of this variable is within the get user account number function. Okay, they they don't see each other. They're like twins, uh, but you know. But you know, but they're con they're, they're twins, but they're not exactly the same. They're considered different because they are in different functions. Okay, so if it's if it's going to need the charge, the user charge account number, then it's also going to need the the, the list that it should, it should search from, right? And so I'm going to do, define a parameter for that as well. I'm going to define a parameter. I'm going to call it charge account list. Charge accounts list. Um, so this is where it's going to search from. So over here, I can see that I'm exceeding this line, and I want to break it. I'm tempted to break it. So right here, let's see, use the charge account number, charge account list. Yeah, I want to break it somewhere around here. Before I break the line, I need to type in a backslash and hit enter. Okay. We have still we haven't messed up the line. We've just broken it into two visually. It doesn't the, um, functionally. It's not. Uh, it doesn't uh, change its function. It just changes its, its you know, visual look. Okay. All right. So now in the function, what we need to do is, is to search. Now there are di different ways to search. You can use indexing and all that. But if you're if you're just searching for something, then uh, there's an elegant way to kind of also um, search for values in in a list using what's called the in operator. All right. So um, so all I'm going to do is write an if statement and say if the user charge account number in charge account list. What this means is if the if the user's charge account number is in the charge account list, then let's let this function return true, the boolean value true. Else, then let's let this function return the boolean value false. So when we call user charge account number exist, we're passing these two arguments, it's going to return either true or false. All right, so we're done with the main functions, I think. The you know basically the yeah the main individual functions here, and and, and not the actual main function. Um, okay, so now let's create the main function so we so we can basically write our program. So the main function by de not by default in most programming languages the main function is basically where your program starts. It's the function that calls every other function. It's good practice uh, to create the main function that is going to have your program and uh, basically call all, call every other function. So let's create one. So the first thing we want to do is to um, let's read the charge account uh, to to a list to a list basically. And we have a function for that. So I'm going to call read charge accounts to list. And read charge accounts to list. We designed it in such a way that it needs a charge accounts file. So we need that. Well, first of all, we know we have the file. It's in the same folder. Where we created, oops, uh, that is the same folder where we created that program. So programming challenges chapter seven, charge accounts validation. We know we have the file here, we know, and this is our program. And so let's attempt to open it. Okay, so we can read from it. Um, so right here, I'm going to call the open function, and the open function takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in the file name of the file we want to open. I like to you know store these in individual you know constants. I like to store things in constants and, and, and variables. Um, I don't like to just leave them open. And so I'm up here. I'm going to declare um, a constant, the name constant here, so I can store the file name in there. I'm going to call this file name, file underscore name. And I'm going to set it equal to a string. We called our file here charge account. The txt charge underscore account the txt so charge account the txt. All right, so we are the open function takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in what the file name 
and what mode you're, um, you're basically opening the file in. So I'm going to provide the file name and the mode we want to open, uh, open this file in is read mode. In double quotations or single quotations, you can. I'm going to write the, the letter R, meaning we open this file in read mode. And then it's going to return a reference to that file. And so if it's returning a reference to that file, we need a place to store it. I'm going to store this reference in a, uh, in a variable okay, called um, charge accounts file. And so charge accounts file will refer to that file we just opened in memory. All right, so just space this out a little bit. So read charge accounts to list. Uh, let's name this. Let's name this read charge accounts. Okay, just so we are consistent with our naming. Read charge accounts to list because it's really a list uh, a file a file that contains charge charge accounts. So it's just a modification to the name. That's it. We just need to refer to it here when we are calling it. So recharge accounts to list needs a charge accounts file, which we have here. Okay, again, it doesn't matter that these names are the same. They are considered different because they are in two separate functions. The scope of this is within the main function, and the scope of this is within the recharge accounts to list function. So we have the file here. The recharge accounts to list function needs it. I'm going to pass it to it. And we know the read charge accounts to list function returns a charge account list. And so if it's returning a charge account list, we need a place to start. So I'm going to create a list here, charge account. Now basically a variable here to store the list. So charge account list is going to store this variable here is going to store whatever list is returned from the read charge accounts to list function. All right.